Makes me sick whenever I see him make a TikTok in the changing room. You suck. You are terrible. You are the worst football player I've seen in recent times. You are so lucky you're not in my flop 11 because you were close. This Buck up your ideas, you pussy. You're a melt, mate. And you're shit. He's and I'm so, so glad you come back into Prem to try and reignite your career and you stunk it up again. You're dusty you. Yo, welcome back to the Board Draw Podcast, episode number 43. Bosh, smashed it. Smashed it first time. Today is a day of mixed emotions. It was a weekend of mixed emotions. Five goals, 20 minutes, the death of Tifo. Got too much to talk about. God. But we're not going to talk about any of that. <laughs> yeah, fuck Because we're going to talk about our flop XI of the season, our flop 11s. And we're using the term flop um, loosely. A lot of people do their flop signings of the season. We're just doing flops in general. We're holding signings to a higher standard. Yeah, but, if um, you came into this season and we thought, yeah, you're decent and you've stunk up the gaff, you could be in this flop 11. You're not necessarily just new signings. New signings, expensive new signings, looking at you, Spurs and Chelsea, they will be on the grill. But it's not just them. There will be a couple of people that we just generally think have been shocking. So sit back, enjoy. We're going to pitch a flop from each position each. And build our old And then build 11. like a flop 11. Starting goal. As always. We actually have the same player. And there's no dispute in it. He is the stinkiest Don. Talking about the 5 0 in the first 20 minutes Did of the weekend. Did you see the video about uh, there was a guy who said he went to fill up his car? And as he left his car to go pay for his petrol as um, the game kicked off, and he went into the petrol station, went and got a coffee. The coffee machine took a, a few minutes or whatever, and he actually went to the toilet, came out, and Spurs were 5 0 down. Oh, I bet he dropped a big old shit, though. Not as big a shit as uh, oh, Lloris. goalkeeper, Hugo Lloris. Oh, my God. He Hugo. is so bad. I just. How... He is France's number one. Mate, he his like kind of stagnation is crazy because he was France. He is France's number one. Definitely can't be anymore. Mike Magnan from AC Milan is crazy. He should be number one. But um, yeah, just I think he's just years of like being in such a bang average Spurs side with no competition for his spot. He's he, just lost everything. He's just rotting away, mate. He made he, his best performance in the last two years was against England in the World Cup. He is just so bang average. He can't. He is like an accident waiting to happen. He can't play out from the back very well. His shot stopping, which was his only plus point, is just gone. He's like David De Gea, but David De Gea still has some remnants of a shot stopper. Yeah, 100%. He's like uh, just Within a terrible him. David De Gea, which is not what you want. <laughs> He's just terrible. Yeah, so Hugo Lloris, and as we've both got Hugo Lloris, well done, Hugo. You get straight in the team, mate. Straight in the team, and he could captain this team because he has been shocking. Absolutely shocking. And it's going to be a hard one for Spurs to get rid of him, but they need to. Mm-hmm. Get rid of him now. He's so bad. Get ri- uh, Mate, terminate his contract. He's, if he is there beginning of next season, you failed. Your summer is automatically... You could sign every, the greatest player. You could have Messi, you'd have Haaland and, and Bappe as your front three, and you would still have a flop of a summer if you've got a reason starting in your eleven. I said this on the pod months ago when we were talking about how Spurs are terrible and how Man United are terrible. What's changed? Um, the, the problem they both had is that Harry Maggs and Hugo Lloris were both their club captains. And how can you have got into a situation where your worst player at the club is He's somehow your captain? Because yeah. then you can't get rid of them because that requires, like I don't know, a re-jiggling of the dressing room and the kind of authority leadership thing. And it's just like, how have you got to a situation where this guy is your club captain? But at the end of the day, like, how can you respect someone who is just terrible? <laughs> yeah. Especially like in goal, it's like one of those things like all the players probably don't really see themselves going in goal and doing much better. But like Harry Maguire, there must be like Martinez, Varane, Varane, five-time Champions League winner, just playing next to this guy who's your, who's your captain. It was like when Ronaldo was there as well. It's how are you, Casemiro's there. It's like, how are you listening to Harry Maguire as a captain when you're Ronaldo, Casemiro, Varane? You're not. But you're we're not, not talking about Harry Mags. So you get away. Hugh Lloris, you stink. 
Yeah, big time. Good mate. night. Want to give us your right back? Is that where we're going next? Right back. Bit of a rogue one. I haven't seen many people talking about him. I can't say I have watched every Nottingham Forest game, but I've watched a fair few. Nico Williams, mate. He is my stinker of the right backs. Yeah, it was close between Forrest and Fulham for his signature, wasn't it, at the beginning of the season? Yeah. Probably regretting not picking Fulham. Fulham would be a nice move. But I don't know. It's a weird one because he hasn't quite lived up to... His initial performances were actually quite good. I think I'm going off the fact that when we did like our transfer window review, I had him as one of the signings of the summer. A Wales international that's been in that kind of elite Liverpool team. Yeah, he didn't play much for the Liverpool team. But he was in and around that elite Liverpool team in Champions League games, in big pressure nights, learning from who at that point was the best right back in the world in Trent Alexander-Arnold. I was expecting him to come into that Forest team, be first name on the team sheet, be one of the best players every week. And he just hasn't been. He's getting dropped for Serge Aurier, who is dross as well. So it's bad when you're getting dropped for him. And yeah, he's just not really kicked on and done what I thought he could do. Been. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I think people were expecting him to have a good link up play with Brennan Johnson purely because of their Welsh we said that association and Steve Cooper as well mm. with the under 21s. But um, yeah, it just hasn't really done too much. I, I think calling it a flop is harsh because he's still there, he's still young, he's still at times to sort of like You're a flop. prove himself. You're a flop. Um, but yeah. I, it's not been a great season um, and Forest find themselves as of this recording 19th 19th in the Premier League so you do be stinking it could be seeing who have you got right he could back. be tearing up the championship next season who knows he could be yeah who knows uh, my right back is a man who played for Forest last year uh, and was expected to sign for them this year until the Spurs came marching in and uh, they didn't drop 5 in this one they dropped 20 Bash. And I think he's played about 12 minutes or whatever, something. Yeah, if that. I've barely seen him. We're talking about Jed Spence, um, who was one of the most highly rated prospects going into uh, the transfer window. Yeah. A lot of teams uh, looking for his signature. Arsenal were looking at him as well. Uh, he was a devastating right back in the championship last season. He was... Um, now he's had a devastating season. Couldn't get anything going at Middlesbrough under Warnock. Steve Coopy took him in. Um, and then yeah he, he went from there and he was he was unplayable at times he was absolutely phenomenal 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 player and I think he still is but for some reason he just can't get into this Spurs team this stinky stinky yeah. Spurs team well that's why I don't think I can call him a flop because he hasn't really been given the opportunity where I think Nico Williams has been given an opportunity yeah, but, but then he, again he, it's he like had the, the world team. at his feet he could have signed for it, like anyone he's gone to Spurs can't get in the first team they've dropped 20 on him and like it, it, mate, it, their, their defence is dropping 5 and 20 minutes to uh, Newcastle and he still can't get in the team facts but they st- and his, his pathway is even harder now because they signed Pedro Porro exactly he's not going to look in is he so yeah it, I think yeah the transfer could be considered a flop hopefully he but does I don't know if it was it, I, it didn't strike me as a Conte signing no and I he think even it was said, very much yeah. Daniel Levy yeah. bringing in players for who he thinks will represent Spurs in the yeah. future so yeah it's a strange one but in the uh, Season where English right backs have sort of failed to impress when you've got the likes of Reese James, Trent. You see, Reese James is out for the rest of the season. Reese James, Trent. Um, Are we going to start talking of... about Reese James being a flop? <sighs> Reese James, Trent, you're struggling this season. Carl Walker sort of aging off a bit. The, I mean, the best right back, the English right back, is between Trippier or Ben White. It's ben so, White every day of the week. But yeah, a Trippier, Trippier or Ben White. has been elite, mate. Yeah, but a Ben White is the future, mate. But yeah, um, especially in this kind of era where one of your fullbacks is D- DM, like a DM slash centre back. Now we're in that era. We've kind of moved on from that era of like bombing on fullbacks, and we've moved into a kind of one tucks in, one goes forward era. Ben White is the future, mate. There you Shame go, he doesn't yeah. get on with Gareth Southgate. It's true. It's true. Um, but yeah, my right back flop, Jed Spence. Who are we picking out? Who, who's going to be our right back? I was thinking, literally just now I'm changing the entire context of the video. I think we don't even pick. We put them both up on Twitter and let Twitter decide. Twitter can decide. Twitter can decide. Right. Gosh. Give us your centre back. Um, centre back, number one. Do you want to do your pairing? Yeah, fuck it. I'll do my pairing. Um, 
So, I'll do the, uh, the not so obvious one. Oh, he might be obvious, but I've gone for Tilo Carrere for West Ham. Yep, Tilo Carrere, mine as well. Okay, that's easy peasy then. Um, I, think, I think they dropped. No, what? I didn't have Tilo Carrere. Oh, well, I'm lying to you. But Tilo Carrere, they dropped. I think like 35 mil on him. PSG um, kind of past history played for PSG. He's got pedigree, but he's just come in and just not done anything. And the games he has played have stunk. Big time. And I think West Ham, I've got one more West Ham player in my team. I think their su- summer recruitment, we said, was good. And they come off just the back of a very good Europa League campaign, a pretty decent Prem campaign. They were looking like trying to bust into the Champions League cases. They're trying to bust case from relegation at the moment. And it's it's one of those where you can't blame it all on the new signings, but those signings were meant to take them up a level and they just haven't. And you're getting the blame, Tilo Correa. I'm going to go for our, our joint one. Okay, who we got? Khalidu Koulibaly. It's bad. He's my other one. Koulibaly. Yeah. <laughs> He's bad at you're football. Baddy <laughs> at football. <laughs> She's a terrible man. She's a Koulibaly. He, he's as bad as that, as that uh, play on words. Oh. Maybe he could play on words better than he could play with a football. I, I, what, I, what I don't get here is that he was actually good. He was actually... He was a monster. He... Just he was good in Serie A. Yeah, I agree. And now he is not good. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I said when they made that move that it wasn't a good move, and it's proved the case. I think his tech on the ball, and we say this a lot about Serie A, and it's not always the case because as we as we know, there's like f- what, how many teams in the Champions League semis? There was three, wasn't there? And that was like the most from any nation. So. Everyone can say the Italian league is dusted, but at the moment they're cooking. But I think it is still true that the kind of pace of play, you have a lot more time on the ball. And so he looked decent on the ball in Serie A. Whereas here, especially in a Chelsea team that are just shocking and getting pressed the living daylights out of, his ability on the ball is getting absolutely... like, Like a big light is shone on his... Inability on the ball. What we're finding is and that it's not great. you could be a machine at clearing balls, or whatever, but if you're a team who doesn't sit back, who wants to generate play from deep, from the goalkeeper, generate it through the phases of the pitch, you need to be able to play football with your feet. You know who I'm currently struggling with that? Rob Holden. He's the same. He can't do it. He'll get his big, luscious locks of hair on any header. He's so good at defending the six-yard box, but we're we're beyond that. We we play one of the best playing out from the back systems in the league, and he's just not built for it. But Kalidou Koulibaly, he was brought in to have that kind of tech. He was a big man with big pedigree, and he stunk, mate. The only pedigree he's got is pedigree chum. Oh, dog biscuit. He's dog water. <laughs> Bring that one back. Shit. Right. Yeah, kind of do Koulibaly. Did you have a... You stink. Did you have a Sendy back? Sendy? Uh, do you, have do a you know what? Back? I was going to go for Davison Sanchez, but that's purely because of performance recently. However, s- scrap that. Yeah, but now. I'm going for Harry Maguire. You suck. Slap it. You shit. Get out of my England team. Get out everywhere. You suck. You are terrible. You are the worst football player I've seen in recent times. Harry Maguire, man. It's not, it's not even a flop because we knew he was bad. But somehow, every week you watch him, he gets worse. How is this man? Like, Are you not embarrassed? Embarrassed. Surely you just leave. Just leave. Do, just fake an injury and leave, man. Leave. Just go somewhere, man. You need to go to like Galatasaray and see out your days. If they would have you. Or... Me and Luke are trying to start a five-a-side team and we need a centre-back. Harry Max, do you want to I don't know, bro. I do don't know if I'd have play him. play five-a-side with me and Luke? I don't know. I don't probably not I... after that rant. Because... I don't know if I'd have him. Oh, Jesus. I'd take you, Harry Max, but probably not after that rant. Um, yeah, I, it's hard to dispute that, isn't it? He does. He is a shocker. And it's what I mean, though. The term flop is loose because we knew he was bad. Yeah. But he's actually been so bad that it's embarrassing. And uh, yeah, I think for him, like you want to come in, like he's been phased out of the team. But whenever you get the opportunity to play, you want to play and have like a good game to kind of 
show what they're missing out on. But every game he's given a chance. He's scoring own goals. He's um, doing <sighs> passes around the box that get intercepted. He's just... Why oh, so bad? Was it in, uh, against the needs- where De Gea actually did do dirty? De Gea played the hospital pass of all hospital passes. <laughs> yeah, that was mad. It and was it couldn't, so it couldn't rude. have happened to a worse so player. So rude. He it was could- getting closed down from like four different angles and he <laughs> just <laughs> shut the bed so hard. It couldn't hard. have happened to, like, to anyone so else. So funny. And yeah, you just for that to be in like the first minute of the game, well, then two of us looking at each other like, we should both go. It's even like at the Euros, it, we had like, he had like fairly decent performances yeah. but the problem is though almost uh, like 90% of the chances that we conceded came from some him just being out of position if you look at was it the um, Tuchemeni goal for France mm. where he they scored him, from outside the box yeah yeah and him and like who was it Henderson like none of them decided to like close him down so Tuchemeni had like so much space I can't believe I, I might be mis- mis- those two are top that. tier bozos but so yeah I wouldn't be surprised Harry Maguire you're a flop go back to clown school with, uh, do you know that episode of The Simpsons where Krusty the Clown's in clown school? Yeah. We should do that. You know when Homer hurt. does the little bike? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll do left back. Homer's probably better with his feet, you know. Let us know in the comments who's better We've with their feet. We've got the same feet. left back, don't we? We do. Oh, from one clown to another. Krusty the Clown. What's, how's that song go? It's like... <laughs> At left back, we both have Mark Cucurella. So bad. So bad. Is there more to say? So Mark bad. Mark Cooker, Rella. He's not Ella. a hell of a footballer. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. One, Mark Cooker, hella bad footballer. Hella bad. <laughs> but yeah, Chelsea signed him, 60 million. I think you can put like a caveat on all Chelsea signings that they were just overpriced because Tom Bowley was coming in, splashing that American cash. FIFA career mode style. And yeah, so you can kind of forgive the Chelsea players for their valuations. <laughs> I they will were, never forgive a Chelsea player. Because they're all massively blown out of, out of proportion. But Mark Cucurella was really good at Brighton under Graham Potter. So they signed him thinking, yeah, we'll get him and Potter, hunky-dory. And he was just so bad. He's just not at the level anymore. I, I don't know if it... Was he, being, were... was he being protected by Lewis Dunk telling him how to play football? Yeah, maybe. And maybe he gets better at Chelsea with... Because um... what we see is a lot of a lot of his issues that he just lun- he just goes for like stupid tackles and breaks the like the defensive holding line and then gets passed around yeah after, and that's like, three it. times in the ring and then it causes game. the centre backs to have to either come for it or drop deep yeah and I, I don't know what happened like City were interested in him and so he must have something about him and I think I think like he's like, actually quite good time. like technically yeah like, in his and time I think he Brighton might have tell. like a decent football brain I just don't think it works for Chelsea but 60 million Brighton have had your pants down he's had like did he have a whole good season or was it like a half a good season? Genuinely about half a good season. Because the Brighton had a bit of a stinky period where they went like 10 games without a win. Facts. And then I think it's just the case that City were on him and Chelsea. It's kind of the like the Madrid market. situation where like as soon as... So Chelsea must interest. have had like a list of like three players. Yeah. And as soon as another big six club interests in one of those players you've got, panic stations at Chelsea and they're like we cannot lose that player I mean we'll spend the left back market though is like not one that's incredibly saturated so once one who comes up looks quite good especially yeah. at a team like Brighton they sort of throw probably a bit too much money at it just to get it over the line but what's the difference between 40 million and 60 million for Chelsea he's just looks so bad and like he's one of those players the price tag is way too high he's in a team that is so bad had fucking what more managers than they've had wins this season um and he's just not playing good. Like, you can forgive the price tag. You can forgive your team playing good if you're a standout player in a bad team. He's not. He's looking like one of the worst players in a bad team. So, yeah, for both of us, Mark Cucurella, well done, mate. We'll be back in a minute to give you our midfield, followed by our forwards. We're back, and, uh, yeah, it's time for the midfield. It's just going to get worse from here on out. The defence was stinky. You thought it was stinky. It's about to get worse. I've got an interesting midfield. It's going to raise some questions. It's going to get a few fan bases on my case. Come fight me. I've fought Rio Ferdinand. I've fought... Who else have I fought on Twitter? I don't know. Bear Man United fans. I'll slap you all up. So, 
Should we start with like the deepest of the midfielders? The most defensive midfielder you've got. We've both gone for a 4-3-3 sort of formation. Yeah. With one DM. Very good. Um, who have you got as your DM? My DM is a man who divides opinion. I feel like most people like him. Some people really dislike him. Uh, Calvin Phillips. Calvin for Manchester Phillips. City. Yeah, a fairly big price tag. What was it? 40? Yeah, 40 mil. Yeah, 40 minutes, in the 40 like to 50 region. Um, I think he's played like 17 minutes of football. Yeah. Been injured for like seven months. That's what I'd like. I was trying not to get players that haven't really been able to touch the pitch. Because, yeah, that is a bad signing. That is a flop. But it's like, at least give Mandem a chance to prove themselves. But... Prove yourself by not being injured. You've got to be like you, you wouldn't you wouldn't pay like forty seven million pounds worth of that for a car that doesn't work. Yeah, you were meant to be Fernandinho's replacement and you, you just suck. Not getting a look in. You suck. And he's when I, he has not, getting a look in, he's getting played around pretty easily. I don't he's like a, just a midfield destroyer, yeah. He causes havoc. I don't, I can't see him ever playing in the system. Well he got brought, I think, because he has that kind of passing IQ. Leeds, you can see, he's like a quarterback. He's spraying passes left, right, and centre. I don't know if at City you've got the license to do that. You don't. Yeah, but you don't. That's not how they play. They exactly. Yeah. So it's it's a it was a weird signing from day dot. I think. Whereas like so now he's uh, Liverpool interested in him. I think they want to pay thirty five mil. They that would make sense for them to have a deep midfielder that can spray passes to Salah making the runs, spray passes to Nunez, Jota making those runs. They play that kind of thing. That's what, currently what they've got Trent doing. So that as a signing makes sense. And also, but a city, if you like bring you in someone like we have Cal- uh, Calvin Phillips <coughs> coverage, where he like he covers so much of the pitch. He's got good defensive capabilities. He's brilliant at cutting out passes. He's like a good intercept. He's, he's a disruptive player. That probably gives license to Trent to play a little bit, or gives Trent a little bit more backing. Yeah, yeah. Because he, like cover him for his defensive frailties yeah 100%. so potentially not a bad sign but for City I don't know it's a weird one I haven't seen a reason why they would do it but like you say he has been injured so maybe we can give him a bit of leeway on here but um, City are doing that though aren't they they kind of just cherry pick very good players from mid-table teams just so their top six rivals for me them. I can't see him having a long career at City I think he's gone in the summer so do I so for me 45 million or whatever it was that's a flop yeah because for me I think Playing for England is like um, his star, like star role. It's not being the best player at a team because he's never going to be the best player at a club. But he's a very good team player, especially for England. And so the fact now that he's kind of lost his spot, and I think he won't really get it back. Like Declan Jude, and then an attacking midfielder is the future. But I think he can probably see himself trying to get back into that England team. And he's not going to get into the England team if he's rotting away on the seat bench. Agreed. My DM, though, See and we'll have to like put this years. out to um to Twitter to decide who's had the bigger flop of a season. Um, I've got Fabinho. I think he has been He's so, 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 so bad this season. He was in the discussion pre-season when Casemiro came in. The discussion was there are so many world-class DMs in this league. You've got Casemiro now, you've got Rodri, you've got Thomas Partey, and you've got Fabinho, the four best DMs probably in the world, all playing the Prem. I've seen conversations, and it's always Partey versus Rodri versus uh, Casemiro. Fabinho isn't even in the discussion. There's DMs playing for bloody... Bournemouth. Onana, bro. Onana. They're in the discussion ahead Relegation of Fabinho. Relegation fodder. Fabinho is dog. He's getting dropped. He got dropped for Bosetic, who I actually quite like. But he's too young. The fact more. that you're getting dropped for an 18 year old that's never played a game for Liverpool, and you're for big Fabinho, Real Madrid pedigree, won the Champions League with Liverpool. Big Fabinho, one of the best DMs to play the game, and you're getting dropped for an 18 year old that probably isn't actually a DM. That's he, embarrassing. There are a few players this season who had a bigger drop off than him, because he has been. Stinky as it comes, yeah. Like you say, he's he, Liverpool's defense aren't purely at fault for their issues. No, 
it stems from the lack of their press. It stems from the lack of their defensive midfielding ability. Their yeah. midfield has been non-existent this season. Yeah. Henderson, uh, Thiago, Fabinho. Thiago, Paul. this is a P, is it a P, PSA? Personal, personal public service announcement. Yeah. PSA to Thiago, you are so lucky <laughs> you're not in my flop 11 because you were close. This Buck up your ideas, you pussy, because you were this close to my fraud 11. But you just got out of it. You're lucky that he's, he's gone under the radar. All bit. of you Liverpool midfield man, Henderson, um, who else they got? Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott, no, he's, he, he's, he, mate, he wasn't even Thiago. a midfielder. He wasn't even a centre mid until this You're season. You're all lucky that Fabinho's had a worse season because I could have put all three of you in my... All four mate, of you. Could you imagine me. if Liverpool actually signed a proper midfielder not just Artur? Artur, he could have got in all five, every midfield player that is on the books for Liverpool could have come in my flop 11, but Fabinho, it was you, could your dog. Because you fell off, bro. You Big fell time. off. Just, Big time. I was, the spat on the laptop. I was angry. Right. So yeah, let's know. On. We'll put that one on Twitter. Next one. Jay Lings, mate. You're in the flop 11. You had it all in the summer. You, you had a decent end to this. Not a, you had an electric end to the season with West Ham. Everyone's thinking he's going to stay at United. No. You chased big money. West, West Ham, Ham offered you yeah. big, big money. You said no. You went to Forest. You went like the Stevie Cooper... You like uh, the money, the is philosophy. What you enjoyed. But there were rumours of a 200 grand a week contract. Apparently, that's not true. You Apparently, it's more 80 grand a week. Off topic, but uh, Zaha got offered 200 grand a week at Palace. He good. Deserves it. <laughs> so much money for Palace. Yeah, well, he's all right. He does 200 grand in shirt sales. Yeah. Not a week, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like a 40 mil deal. That is outrageous. Anyway, yeah, Jay Lings, he... He, he was like, I know Forrest made a million signings in the summer, but he was like the highest profile one, probably. Him and uh, Gibbs White. White yeah. who, Gibbs White has probably kicked on and delivered to the level that he should have. But Jesse Lingard, him and Morgan Gibbs White as a front attacking two eights, that's nice if they're both on job. But Jesse but Lingard is so more bad. He's TikToks in the Forest changing rooms and he's had like minutes on the pitch. Makes me sick whenever I see him make a TikTok in the changing room. If I was one of the boys in the changing room, I'd be like, Fucking put that phone he's away a, right He's now. a player who feels like else. they're like 22, but he's like 29 years Mate, old. Mate, yeah, you, you're a big man. You've got a child. Stop acting like one of those 18-year-old no, TikTok no, no, no. boys. He could do that all he wants if he's actually performing. Not in my but books. Man, he's, he's done nothing. I think zero goals, zero assists this season. So bad. It's poor. It's poor. It's Especially, like, when was that season? Two seasons ago where he was probably the most elite player in the league for West Ham he was like goals and assists coming out of his ass. now so bad so bad and at a team where you like he's at his prime age now and people are looking to him in that team especially because they are battling relegation they're looking to him to be like can you lead us out of a relegation fight can you be the can best be the player, player in the like team break, like to, to take us from being a relegation team to being just a that, table yeah, team yeah. yeah and he is just lapping up that cash and doing nothing mate Jesse Lingard, you're a flop. I'm going to counter Jesse Lingard, although I'm totally on board with him being in the flop 11, um, with Lucas Pacatar. Okay. Kind of similar in the sense that gone for big cash and West Ham didn't make as many signings as Forrest, but they made a fair few and they were all kind of like with the aim of taking West Ham to the next level. Like we said, Carrere, Gianluca Scamacca, um, Danny Ings. Ariola on a perm. Ariola on a perm. Um, and Lucas Pacatar. And he was the most expensive because he was linked left, right, and centre to top European teams. So he just came from Lyon and he was linked to the likes of Barcelona, Arsenal were interested in him. I think Newcastle were. I think Man United had a link with him. So he'd been linked around because him and Bruno Gumarech at Lyon were like one of the, the duos, the, one of the most elite duos in the world at that point. And obviously, everybody saw Newcastle snap up Bruno Gumarais and how good he was doing. So they thought, pacatar has got to be on that level. And in theory, he is. He plays for Brazil. He got uh, starts at the World Cup. You can tell he's a baller. And he was meant to be that player that you'd play alongside Declan Rice and make West Ham. In theory, Declan Rice and Lucas Pacatar, that's one of the best midfielders in the league. So the fact that West Ham are battling relegation... Looking so dry, 
could have done with some inspiration. He needs to be that guy. And you're playing alongside one of the best DMs. Well, I was talking about DMs earlier. I didn't mention Declan Rice. But um, he's got, he's got like so much license because of what Declan Rice offers. Like Declan Rice will give you the freedom Yards, to play like that. Yeah. Look at how Jude Bellingham does it. Exactly. When he plays for England. And I yeah, he I should know you're be not going to dominate games the same way England dominate teams as West Ham. But you're still going to have license. Yeah. And, and you're doing nothing with it. Nothing. Facts. Last season. Like, pack it up. Pack it in, you <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, pack it up. Pack it in. Uh, although we all love it when Declan Rice, uh, Declan Rice and Paketar score and then the fucking score sheet is Paketa Rice. Paketa Rice. That's yeah. always solid. So just for that alone, maybe you survive and you're not in the flop 11. But no, he has been terrible. He was meant to take West Ham up a tier, get them that Europa League for sure or Champions League level football. Last season, they were one of the best teams in the league. Like we say they don't dominate and this season they're well and truly not dominating. But last season, they'd go to big games and dominate. I saw them dominate Spurs. They dominated Arsenal for that. We had a free all draw against them. But you them. said big games and you said Spurs. That's facts. No, but um, man, that's big game. Yeah, I've seen them dominate teams last season and they should have kicked on. And the fact that they haven't, I'm going to blame the new signings. So, Pakatar, you shit. Um, moving on from one Brazilian to another. Oh, my wait. final midfield, duh. Duh. Felipe Coutinho. It hurts me to say because I like Coutinho. Yeah, same. I like I liked him at Liverpool, and then it didn't really work too much at Barca. Didn't really work too much at Bayern, and he came to Villa last season, and he had quite a good he had quite a good little yeah. Stint. When he first came on the scene, and he was crazy. He, he must have been really good because that was under Steven Gerrard. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to say. Hard, it's like, like you've hard. got a caveat in the Aston Villa player with the Steven Gerrard tax. So yeah, he done all right, and then he had a permanent move. I think it's fairly big money. Yeah, it's wages. In terms of wages. Crazy. And Villa, um, they got peas, to be fair. Yeah, no, but still, it's big money. It like, is, yeah. He should even, be that guy. Mate, you can have all the money you want. You, if you're paying someone like that much money, you still want some return. It's just not really been it, is it? No. It couldn't really get it to work. It couldn't really get Buendia to work, really, either, could it? No, although Buendia now is yeah. kicking on. He, he, that like front three that Emery's got going of like yeah. Ramsey, Watkins, and Buendia... He's nice. But they couldn't really... Wendia and uh, Coutinho should have been like some mad... Tri- uh, like, Technical excellence. And I don't really like talking about the guy, but Michael Beal on, uh, with Steven Gerrard, they play like this Christmas tree formation with uh, they're, like Danny Ings up top and then they had Coutinho and Buendia in like the t- both like two tens almost. Yeah. But they were all split wide or whatever. But it was like a Christmas tree. Very, very cool formation. Uh, didn't really work out though. Only works out in winter. <laughs> Because the players are like, what the hell's a Christmas tree? In the Christmas tree's nothing without a star up top. And Ollie Watkins is now that star. But um, <laughs> That was nice. Yeah. Um, Coutinho, yeah, Coutinho, unfortunately, I hate to see you do it like this, but you're just not doing it. Um, we could have an all-Brazilian midfield here. Fabinho, Pacatar, and Coutinho. Not but- if my final midfielder has anything to say about it. And I love him. I've said multiple times, come on the podcast. You're the one of the star boys of... Three, like two, three years ago, three England star boys, attacking star boys, burst onto the scene. Phil Foden, maybe a little bit before that. Bukayo Saka and one Money Mason Mount all broke onto the scene at similar times and they were all cooking. And there's discussions. Oh, he's the star boy. No, he's the star boy. No, he's the star boy. Phil Foden's won numerous Premier Leagues. Um, Going to win a Champions League this year. Probably. Mason Mount won the Champions League. Was very, very pivotal in that Chelsea team that won the Champions League. Because Saka won, won absolutely the FA nothing. Cup. And everyone's like, Saka, you're, won the, FA Cup, you're the worst out of all of them. Like, nah, no, he's the best. He... Saka's the best. I'm sick of everyone <laughs> mugging off my boy because he missed a penalty. He's the best player out of all three of them. He won the FA Cup playing as that left wing back. It's true. Didn't he? But anyway, so yeah, there was these three star boys and like... Enough said about Foden and Saka. And now Abera Eze is better than all of them. The, the greatest game in the England team. Saka and Eze, I'd say. Black excellence. Yeah, but, Saka, um, is, Saka, no, Saka is elite. Saka's so yeah, top, Phil top. Foden and Saka, they've gone on. They've kicked on levels high. Mason Mount, we, everyone was kind of like, oh, you're getting like daddy privileges because Lampard was manager at the, the start of his Chelsea career because he had him at Derby. And then Lampard left, Tuchel came in, and everyone's like, oh, Mount won't get in the team. 
Mount was pretty much the most instrumental player in that Tuchel team. And we've said this as well, like, Mount is so different to, uh, like, a number 10. He offers you a way of unlocking defences that a lot of players can't. So he's always a brilliant player to have. But it's like when we say for like England, like sh- do you start Mount? Probably not because nine times out like nine times out of ten, the game doesn't need him and someone else is more effective. But that one game you need him, he is going to be the most effective player. One hundred percent. There's, I, I th- still think he is so good, and I hope to God he makes a move in the summer. I know he won't because Frank's here now, and I think he'll like coax but, him into staying. But Frank's not going to stay after. No, that. Frank won't. But I think Frank will be like. Stay for Chelsea. You're a Chelsea boy. The next regime will be good for you. Blah blah blah. Do you imagine yet yeah, if the but entire mate, time, the entire time, everyone's been like Declan Rice is going to join Mount at Chelsea, and Mount goes to join Declan Rice at West Ham. Nah. Well, if or I, they both go to Liverpool, they both come to Arsenal. Is what I'm hoping because I think Deck is pretty much certain he's twerking for Arsenal. Whereas Mount, there's been links. I, I like I said, I don't think he'll leave Chelsea. I think they will renew his contract. But I think Arsenal and Chelsea, Arsenal and Liverpool are the top two runners for Mason Mount. He'd be good at Liverpool, but at Arsenal in that number eight Xhaka role, he'd be crazy. And that's neither here nor there. What has gone wrong for Mason Mount this season? He's just not very good at football, is he? No, um, he is good at football. I don't know. I always thought under Potter that would be like the perfect manager, like someone yeah, who really we said that, yeah. Matt would Matt works great in a system where he's asked to perform a role. Like that is what you need. That he that is he's that exact player. Yeah, very intelligent player. Very intelligent uh, and play and can play a role. He, he may put him in a, like a TV show. He just stop. Well, that's why I think he'd be so good at Arsenal because Arteta asks very specific roles 100%. from players. And I think he'd cook. Hundred percent. And I, Graham Potter is a man who develops talent. Mm. And I think. There is something in Mason Mount where he needs someone to tell him, give him a kiss, just just like to open him up a bit, just like say, be there, <laughs> bend him over a little bit. <laughs> I mean, bend him over <laughs> and just pump the power of football into him, pump that belief into him. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, he he just needs someone to just just grab it and just fucking send him forward, <laughs> grab it straight. <laughs> Fuck Mason sake. Mount get, get him out He just hasn't cooked this season And a lot of it Like we said With Cucurella and Koulibaly Could be down to Chelsea Just being absolutely terrible But he was Chelsea's star man For the last couple of seasons Look, I think last season He got double digits Goals and assists So the fact that I think He's barely broke three on each This season Is so bad So Mason Mount You might be in The flop 11 Come back after the break Where we're going to hit you up With our final three Prediction, not predictions. Final three flopper boys each. Floppies. And then we'll be hitting oh, you with. We'll call it. We'd like award them a floppy. <laughs> like the a dun- floppy dildo. <laughs> like the Dundies. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like the Dundies. We make a little the trophy. Floppies. The floppy. <laughs> and it's just like a floppy dildo. Go back after yes. the break, yeah, and find out. I will hit you with some double predictions because we've got two game weeks to cover. Lots of football. After the break. It's time for the forwards. Welcome back to the floppies. The floppies. <laughs> we need to go back and rec- we record everything. Yeah, we actually do. I need to. I've already made like the artwork for this episode. Oh, I might have floppies. to re- redo it for like a the floppies. <laughs> that is good. That is good. Don't oh, steal our idea again. Last week we came up with a banger that we're going to use in the future, and we're watching if anyone steals. Yeah, if anyone steals that, again we'll come we've got another banger idea. Don't steal it. Some say Tifo actually we're going to do that, and now that's why they're no longer a thing. Yeah, a lot of podcasts out there they're seeing how how we're doing shit. And they're, they're having to fold. They don't even want to compete. Uh, they the, don't even yeah. want to compete. The game's different now. But yeah, shout out to Tifo. We, yeah, uh, every we time. actually we, we love Tifo. Um, We're going to their live show, their live final live show. show. If you're there, just come say hi. Yeah, please do. Most likely saying hi to you. Um, <laughs> right wing. Yeah. Right wing. Uh, my right winger is none other than the boy, the bus driver, Richard Arlison. I've got him at left wing, so... We'll just we'll double up on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll swap him over to right wing. Um, but he... Oh, my God. 60 million, was it? No Prem goals. More tears than goals. Zero Premier League goals. Or assists. No, he's got, he's got assists. Oh, he might have an assist. Might have like, an assist. Fuck it, who cares? But, that mate... That is so stinky. People were saying, like... And I think even... Speaking of Tifo, I think today they said... Um, JJ Ball was saying, on paper... Even still, Kane, Son, Kulisevsky, good. Potentially the best, the like on paper the best top three front three in the Premier League. 
if you're looking at like if you're looking last season maybe I don't know but this season stunk up every single one of the Spurs players have been disgustingly bad apart from Harry Kane who's had a fairly good season yeah yeah he needs to leave Richard Arlison was bought in um, from Everton to, and he was a really good signing because the theory behind it was he has the ability like it was evidenced because I've got him at left wing you've got him at right wing he, he has the ability to play anywhere across the front three so he can cover all three of Kulisevsky, Kane and Son and then also is good enough to provide enough competition that they will shit themselves and think oh I might lose my spot if I'm not playing good enough there's a reason why but he, they're all so bad wasn't he Brazil's top scorer at the World Cup yeah like he was actually really good for Cooked Brazil at the World Cup so like he is Kept clearly a good Gavin player, but team. Spurs are Spurs in this guy. They're Spurs in him. They are Spurs in him hard. But he reeks of like a Spursing. Like and, and he as as a player that could be the definition of Spurs could be recharged because he is such like I actually quite like him because I love how I love how shit house he is. He is, but very he, he is you, mate. I think ninety five percent of football fans would love to just leather him in the face. I think the funniest thing I think he's had like four offside goals. <laughs> And like every time they get this, oh, he did a fucking post. I meant to send you it, where I think it was on TikTok, where it was a video of his disallowed goal, and then it had like sad music over it, <laughs> and then the caption was like, "I will score my first or something." Like that. <laughs> and I was like, just for that, I'd actually sell him. Like that's embarrassing. <laughs> but like, do you remember? Oh my god, this is going for like seasons ago, but midway it was like halfway through the first half of the season so a quarter of the way through the season Chelsea battle of the bridge he came on the pitch and changed, bought some, and changed the game he brought some passion and we were sat there in that pub after recording at the podcast room I remember very vividly he bought the passion and then the passion spilled out and he had a two short Conte handshake and he bought something yeah that was early doors but that was yeah. early doors and August I everything's think. changed he's had, he's had a bit of injury uh He's just not it, but he's not, not he's not it. Not, good. not doing it. I don't know. You're Richard in both Arlison. of our flop 11s, mate. You're bad. Congratulations. Richard Arlison. You get Richard Arlison. You're bad. We should do an honourable mention to the guy that has slipped out of right wing. Anthony. We have slated you enough this season and we thought we'd be nice and not include you in the flop I think. I think there are more players in front of him that could be... Yeah, you're lucky. Th- there has been a really good conversation lately. Jaden Sancho gets away with it. Why? Yes, Jamie Carragher said that. Why does Jaden Sancho get away with it? When because uh, he's Anthony, English. Anthony, I feel like obviously it's a big price tag, and but he's it, a more of like a eye test cunt. Like yeah, you look at him and you think you're more of a wanker. But there, they are there are there are other players in the Premier League who I'd rather have. Who I'd rather have Anthony over? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So that that is that is part of it. I think I'm just bullying him because I don't like Man United and I don't like his kind of aura. I don't like the fact he's so one foot because it seems yeah. it seems if his right foot was half as good as his left foot, he would be a really good player. Actually, yeah, I don't like kind of how he goes about playing football. Like he cares more about beating a man than like scoring a goal or providing something useful. He'll like go backwards to re-beat a man. Instead of like pushing on the play, it's and some style, gets no tits. substance. Yeah, just gets on my it, tits. Mate. But luckily, you've escaped because Ri- Richard like, Arson is. You, know, so you know when people like go to, like abroad and they buy like fake Gucci, mm. or they buy like f- like fake Louis Vuitton. And it's like L L V, but the V is like the V's like one. <laughs> it's like Louis Vuitton, but it's like Louis Button. <laughs> you see, like the Michael Jordan, like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the ones where he's like I've seen one where he's like doing like this or something. <laughs> so funny. That's I did you, man. That's yeah. a football player. So funny. <laughs> Right, yeah. Left okay. wing. Left wing. Who have you got? Oh, I'll go. Recently just come out of a media, kind of like a big media scrap with his boss. He got... Ellen. Who? Ellen. Oh, she's scrapping her boss. No, Ellen DeGeneres. He's... Oh! Oh, no, he looks like Claire Balding. <laughs> oh, he does, isn't it? He looks like Claire Balding. Anthony Gordon. Oh. Um, I think he's up there with one of the flops of the season. He pushed a move out of Everton, a team that kind of gave him pretty much everything. He scored like four deflected goals. He was never actually that good and at Everton. Thought, and thought he was like... Thought scared. he was a big don. Got pushed a move out of his boyhood club and then got this move to Newcastle and within like a month, he's already beefing his new manager because he's getting subbed off when you're no longer at Everton. You're no longer... He probably wasn't even the best winger. Damari Gray, I'd say, is better than him. 
but you're no longer a big uh, fish in a small pond. You're a, like a very small fish in this growing Newcastle pond of stars. And you're getting dropped for, I don't know who it was, it was like either Almiron, who's their top goal scorer at the time, or Isak or Alan Sinclair. All these players are better than you. Learn some respect. Yeah. Just because you came for big money, you're not a big Don. You're actually a very shit Don. We said in this in the last pod, guys. He is just, he's not a good footballer. I, 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 I it, that he must do something in training mm. that impresses people because I look at him and I just think you are so bang average. He wouldn't even do it for me in the championship. Mate, there's so many Premier League players that are like second or third reserves in their like elite team. Like, I don't know. Like um, Cole Palmer at Man City or someone like... Just there's players dotted around. Harvey Elliott, if you gave him a chance at... The winger, Fabio Cavallio. Reese Nelson is a better player. Reese Nelson. There's probably like Callum Hudson Odoi, who I don't really rate, but he he could put. Him. He's better than Anthony De Gordon. It's just like all these players are like about not really doing much, and then you got Anthony Gordon, who's just a nobody that is now thinking he's a big don just because he got transferred for fifty mil. It's just like, mate, stay in your lane. You're not that good. I, I honestly, he is. I I think I hate him more than I hate Richardson. He's close. I, I didn't think I did, but the more I see him, the more I want to just smack him in the face. Anthony Gordon, get your head together. You're not as good as you think you are. Welcome to the floppies. Welcome to the floppies. Who have you got at left wing? The man who caused a lot of drama in the January transfer window. Thought he was going to Arsenal. Suddenly, oh. Chelsea got it all in a thrust and, and Top Body was like, no, we, we can't have this, guys. We can't have this. We must get the guy from Ukraine. He is our main target. Target acquired. He's only good when he's playing against Chernobyl's finest. It's the man, Mikhailo Mudrik. He is dog water. 100 million. for, Or was it 100 million? Like 80, I don't know. It's some million. ridiculous money will be for a man million. who is almost like Anthony, but he is just a TikTok version. Mate, when he had a like, he, first game against Liverpool, he looked good. The thing is, yeah, he, he looked electric. I think he's got all the facilities to be a really good player. Yeah, he's but strong, he, he's, he's fast. He's, he's strong, he's fast. But there was like, recently, there was a game where he's one on one with a keeper and he just like played it straight at the keeper. I can't remember. Was oh, it against, one on Was uh, it against Real Madrid in the Champions League? No, I think it was Aston Villa. I think it was through against Aston Villa. Yeah, and it, yeah, he's, he's one on one with a keeper and he literally just. Yeah. You have the whole goal to aim at. And he literally straight down the middle. I have of the keeper. every option. You can go around the keeper. I, I think. Him, I actually it. think. Yeah, he has all the facilities to be a great player. Apart from he has no brain. Yeah, he's there like is, the opposite. Like, it is, it is who the are we talking about? That good... It's the monkey with the symbols <laughs> going on Just up like in there. Zero football IQ. Yeah, yeah. Oh mate. And like like you said, like he's so fast, like so strong, tall. It's just, but like you can't teach like just general football IQ and tech, and he just doesn't have it. Yeah, if you, if, I don't know, like that, who's like a sh- maybe like someone like um, it reminds me of like he's got the build and the pace of like Leroy Sane, but yeah. he just hasn't got the ability like Leroy Sane is like, like the ability just, to like be man mentally. And maybe he gets that got coached I mean. into him like as he gets older, he's still young, but at the moment, like did you see I tweeted? Was someone tweeted like a fail comp of Mudrick? And I retweeted it because it's just so funny. Like, I feel the like he's try, he tries to take on players at the like the worst time, and there are times where he should take someone on, and he just doesn't. And I, I don't know, but he's he's got the most assists for Chelsea since he joined. Oh, has he in two? Well, to be fair, they yeah two. they haven't scored a lot. Of I goals believe it's yet. two. Yeah, I may be wrong, but I think it might be two. I have a soft spot for him because he allowed us to get Leandro Trossard, who I think, and we've done our. Um, like, what do we do? Like, transfers of the season? Yeah. Or players of the season where... Oh, wing, we did top wingers. Top 10 Premier League wingers. I had yeah. um, Trossard in mind. If we do transfers of the season, I think Trossard probably is the transfer of the season. Maybe actually Haaland and then probably Trossard. But, um, yeah, he allowed us to get Trossard, who I think is one of the best You'd have Trossard, creators. You'd have Trossard over Gabriel Jesus. No, but th- that's that's... All right, discussion. He is very good. He's so like we're talking about football IQ. He's probably got one of the highest football IQs in the Prem, and his just ability to like drift around and create play. 
He's just something like he's like the opposite to Madrid. He's not big. He's not fast. Yeah, Julian Alvarez over Trossard. No. Genuinely no. But that is yeah. But yeah, he's like the direct opposite. Whereas like Mudrik is fast, strong, powerful, quick. No football IQ. Trossard isn't fast, isn't strong, isn't powerful. But his football IQ is so good that he's already at a higher level than Mudrik. You just without any. You of look at assets. him. You know his IQ is gonna be good because he looks like a Bond villain. <laughs> yeah. Do you see that referee that refereeing again the other day? That you know, I think he was in the Champions League. He looked exactly like Trossard. It was very weird. But yeah. So I like Mudrik that he allowed us to get Trossard. Trossard's second most assists in the Prem. Very good player. Mudrik is not a very good player. I believe we both got the final, the same final player, right? Yes. Abamo who? Abamo where? Abamo bloke like you suck, man. You suck. Bad. You stink. Oh my dear. Mate, you're you're so out of date, man. That it is it, oh, it's just and it must be great for you. It must be it must be so satisfying for you as an Arsenal fan because he had an absolute strop and everyone knows it. And he went to Barca and he stunk it up. He actually had a decent start. He stunk it up. No, he was actually quite good at Barca. He had, he had a decent start. Yeah, and I think he, he wasn't the worst. But then Barca couldn't afford to keep paying him. Mm. He's come to Chelsea and it was like a Tuchel reunion. And then about two weeks later, Tuchel was gone. I think I'm just... Like, I'm happy now because the guy had the cheek... To make a video, and I'll make a TikTok about this, and I'll have the video in there where he had his family wearing an Arsenal top, and then he like dropped the Arsenal top, and they were all wearing Chelsea tops, and I was like, "This guy's a fucking wet don." Imagine being big, thirty years old. You got your kids, your wife, and you're like, "Let's make a TikTok where we mug off the club." Pretty much like almost made him like a legend in the Prem, and. He was like, no, I'm just going to mug them off for the for the TikTok views. You're a melt, mate. And you're shit. He's and I'm so up. glad you've come back into Prem to try and reignite your career and you've stunk it up again. You dusty you. You're a dosser. You suck. You, you're just terrible. Um, what happened? What happened? You were you were very good. You you sort of threw in the towel at Arsenal. And you, you had never... the world at your feet at Arsenal. And, and you threw he it never away. picked it up. We, we, made, we gave up. him that contract. We shouldn't have. But we did it. We gave him a fatty contract. You made he him had the world. Captain, yeah, we had made him captain. He said, oh, I want to stay. We gave him that announcement that he was like, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to captain the club. I want to be a legend like Thierry Henry. Fucking idiot's got a tattoo of himself in an Arsenal top. And then he goes and mugs off Arsenal. What are you doing? And he's like, I want to be a legend at Arsenal. And then you just, just stink it up. And it's just like, I'm so glad. That your career, you just, get, has what, you just apart. get what comes to you, don't you? Like you, you, you treat it. you treat a club who treated you, gave you everything. You treat him like dirt, spitting, and it and yeah, it comes back to haunt you. Um, so couldn't happen to a nicer guy. I hope you continue <laughs> continues like this. Yeah, go, keep driving that dusty ass. But if you want to come on the podcast, we'll let it, we'll give, we'll wrapped. Wrapped, that looks like but yeah, yeah. Rounds up our. Uh, that was good. Yeah, rounds up our. I'll tweet the ones 11. that we have two options for, and you can decide. And then we'll make a the floppy 11. The floppy 11s, mate, because some of them are absolute stingers. There are going to be so many players who we could have considered. However, these are just our opinions. Um, we pretty much did this on the fly. Yeah, so. don't take it to heart. We, we, we could have sat down and done a lot of research for this, but we've done it just off, our, off the cusp, really. It's all vibes um, here, baby. But yeah, let us know who would be in your floppy 11s. Who have we missed out? Who's going to be in there? by the end of the season. Maybe yeah. there's going to be someone who flops hard. Do you know what I mean? Who knows? But uh, yeah, it's been a little nice chat. But before we leave you, we've got we've so got, many predictions to do. We have got two rounds of predictions to do. So we'll be right back after the break. Get ready. We'll speed through. There's it. about 400 games to predict. And as you know, our predictions are going to be as stinky as the players we just talked about. Right. Predictions are here. Um, We've got Midweek games, we've got next weekend's games to talk about. So we're going to go flying through these. Yes. Starting off today, Tuesday, 25th. We've got Wolves versus Palace. Palace looking quite good under Roy Hodgson. Yeah, what's that? No, no, no losses. They drew their last game, didn't they? Mm-hmm. So yeah, very good. Wolves got a decent win against Brentford that we both didn't see coming. But um, I think it's going to be a stinker this game. These two reek of teams that just don't really score much. And I won't be watching this game tonight. So... I'm going to go with a stinker 1-0 Palace. I think I'm going to go 
one all. Yeah, I'm gonna go one all. Gary Cross got his first goal for Wolves on the weekend. The he? game I will be watching tonight: Aston Villa versus Fulham. Two Villa. teams that are flirting with European spots that I think at the start of the season no one expected them to be in contention for. So good game. Yeah, definitely not. Um, for me, I think Villa might still have a little bit too much in the tank for uh, Fulham. I, they yeah. ju- they're just really impressing me week in, week out. So um, I'm going to go for a Villa 2-1. Two, mm, two one. Two one Villa. I think a Villa win as well, but I'm going to go 2-0. Okay. Leeds versus Nitro Leicester. Fulham just doesn't do it for me. Relegation battle here. Yeah, Leeds versus six Leicester. Pointer. Six pointer, mate. And I, fa- I, I actually don't know who will win this. I see goals in this game. Both teams. I'd say as far as the worst defences in the league, these two have got the worst defences in the league. Yeah. And I think there's goals... Don't know if Madison's back, but I can see Harvey Barnes scoring. I can yeah, oh no, is Harvey Barnes injured? Harvey Barnes might be injured, you know. Um, but yeah, I can see goals in this game. I'm gonna go for a three-two Leeds. Nice. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go for a two-all. Two-all. I was close to two-all. I'm gonna two-all. Right. Nottingham Forest hosting High Flying Brighton. They just went out in the FA Cup semi-final to Man United. They did on penalties. Ball tour at the game. Love to see it. They were. For me, Brighton were probably the better team in the FA Cup semi-final. Just couldn't get it. But both teams were severely lacking quality in, in that third, in that yeah. final third. Yeah, just... Facts. wan did a fairly decent job. Cooper Matoma choir. He did lock up Matoma. But Matoma did have a few little runs, darts into the box. But mm. probably somewhere like Evan Ferguson would, was a big miss for them. You see he signed a new contract. Yeah, big miss for them so in that a, game, though. Nice um, little but yeah. surprise for Brighton fans. Uh, Brighton are going to have too much for us, I think. And I'm going to go for a 2 0 win to Brighton. Yeah, I think they slapped them. I think I'm going to go more than that. I think I'm going to go 3 1. Yeah, 3 1 Brighton. Uh, Chelsea versus Brentford. London Derby. I think Brentford could get a result here. Frank Lampard's still looking for his first win as interim Chelsea manager. They weren't bad against Madrid in like the first like Yeah, half. I think it just comes like Madrid I don't think got out of second gear that entire like both legs, which yeah. is crazy. And then but they just picked their tight they picked yeah, yeah. they tight they, tie, they well, I can see them like turning up to Man City. If Man City probably thinking, Oh, if they play like that against us, we'll smash them. I think they'll put on an absolute show against Man City. Maybe I don't yeah. know if they'll beat Man City, but I reckon like their level step up significantly. Yeah, they, they sort of they can do that, can't they? Like, but Chelsea are losing this. I'm going to go two one Brentford. I'm going to go one all one all draw. West Ham Liverpool. I fancy Liverpool to make a late charge for Europe. What Europa or Champions League? I don't know. I, th- I like. I, I think, think Champions they- League is optimistic. Yeah, but I think they've got like genuinely no chance. They're so far off points wise, and Newcastle got nothing left to play for apart from that. Man United. Obviously got FA Cup still, but I think Man United have enough to get a few more wins and get Champions League. Yeah, it, I mean it would I be it, it will be hard, hard. but the char- it is a, still a charge. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I fancy him to beat West Ham. I'm gonna go two 0 Liverpool. I'm gonna go for a result of the same of the same numbers. No, different numbers. I'm gonna go four one Liverpool. Four one. I like that. That's a that's a that's a strange result, but it's like like strange number. Don't even want to look at the next game. Man City versus Arsenal, and it's gonna be if if you lose this, your season's over. Yeah, it's bad. But um, if we go into that game with Rob Holding, it could be an absolute massacre. Did you see? Is I Tommy tweeted, asked you back. No, was it up for the rest of the season? He's pretty much out for the rest of the season. I think Saliba is as Saliba, well. Saliba, David Orson said this morning that yeah. Saliba's gonna be out. Did you see? I tweeted, so it came up in my timeline. It was like Arsenal's lineup last time we went to the Etihad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. defence was Leno in goal. Okay, fair enough. Our back three of Chambers, Rob Holden, and Kalasanak. And then we had Cedric and Tierney. That is so bad as a back five that buff that we got out of there alive. I know we actually got slapped. I think it was like 4 0. But Christ alive, it could have been 7 0. Would eight. you rather have like Zinchenko, Tierney? Gabriel Ben White, or would you like? What about like Tierney, Gabriel Ben White, and Zinchenko on the right? I think a lot of people in the Arsenal sphere are or talking party. about party. Yeah. Is, he's had but previous th- at playing a right back, but I think he's so important to that midfield. I do think what, so, but, but, but have, I think like, in, what, have Jorginho in there. Yeah, and then also that system probably allows party to, to play that. He can play that yeah. kind of midfield. So I'd mate, like to see that happen. Mate, we just Arteta, if you've got Mikel, if you've got any balls, do it. Do it because. I, for the love of God, can't see Rob Holding. If you try matching up to them, bro, do you imagine Rob Holding? Rob them Holding's up? either going to get red carded or we're going to concede seven. Do you remember seven. the uh, FA Cup game? 
Was it FA Cup? Well, he locked or, up or Diego Cup. And he, yeah, he like locked up Diego Costa. No, Rob, Rob Holden um, then he got sent off, didn't he? Against oh, against Haaland. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the one where he'd done a masterclass against Diego Costa. No, no, no. But um, yeah, I think either we concede seven or he gets red carded. You know what would be good if Rob Holden came in against the against Man City and he's had like braids. <laughs> yeah, Heavy. like when Haaland does that sometimes, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Get Valued. General G as centre back. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> All right, I Worst. think I'm going to go optimistic just because I love the boys. 2-1 Arsenal. I'm going 6-1 Man City. I worryingly could see that happen. Did you do my re- my prediction last week? I 11, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I tagged you. Are you actually going 6-1? Yeah. Fucking hell, mate. Um, Everton versus Newcastle. Let's speed through these. Give me a score. The Anthony Gordon Derby. The Anthony Gordon Derby. <laughs> I like that. Um, obviously, Newcastle with a, with a bang of a result. Uh, I'm going to go 2-1. I think it's going to be a tight game. 2-1. I like that. I think 3-1. Southampton versus Bournemouth. That was for Newcastle. Yeah, it's both for Newcastle, yeah. Southampton versus Bournemouth. Um, Bournemouth, to, it's going to be a one or draw. Yeah, I like that. I think it's going to be a... One will draw as well. So, uh, Spurs, Man United. This will be a good game. Two teams. Cellini out the door. The Ryan Alim- Mason back in. Wobbly form. Yeah, Ryan Mason in. This is a battle for Champions League. Um, good game. I don't know. It's a good guy either way. Um, Spurs, I don't know. They are off a slap. But you, they can't. You, you, you can't, know what's weird? I said in the podcast, last podcast, where Spurs bottled the... Um, result against Bournemouth and they were 3-2 three, 2-1 two, uh, three, two, two, up yeah. and they lost 3-2 and I was like Spurs they're notorious for being embarrassed and then the next game doing nothing about it and get embarrassed again and they lost fucking 6-1 so that was spot on so can they be embarrassed and then not do anything about it again again is they the question they're the the going for their own treble they're going yeah. for the treble <laughs> the treble of embarrassment um, what do you reckon I don't know I don't think Man United have it in it to kill a team they like that. I think this will be a tight affair. I think it's going to be... I'm going to go 2-1 United, I think. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Okay. That's the... Oh, mate, you're spitting all over this. Getting laptop. excited. <laughs> right. All right, let's... let's so Saturday, many. the 29th. Palace versus West Ham, London Derby. I'm going to go for a one all draw. one all draw. I'm going to go for a 2-1 West Ham. Brentford versus Forest. I'm going to go for a 2-0 Brentford win. I'm going to go for a 2-0 Brentford win. Brighton Wolves. Brighton, too good. 3-1 win. I'm going to go for a 3-0 win to Brighton. Bournemouth versus Leeds. This will be a good game. This is a relegation battle. Although Bournemouth, I'm, I just feel like they're clear at the Gary moment. Gary one of the best managers in the world. Bosh. I think Leeds get a result here, though. 2-1 Leeds. I'm going to go for a 2 all draw. I think Leeds make a push and they get themselves I'll clear of relegation. I'll Leeds 2 alls. But um, yeah, Fulham versus Man City. Man City are going to slap Arsenal. Then they're going to slap Fulham. They're going around London with their cocks out. Man City, 4-0. Yeah, I do think City batter them. But I think that's out of anger at not getting the result against Arsenal. Potentially. I'm going to go for a 3-0 City. Oh, spicy game here. Man City, sorry, Man United versus Aston Villa. I think this was Unai Emery's first game for Villa. Well, he got a result. I think he won like 3-2. So, yeah, decent, two decent teams. Um, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. I was going to go for a 1-1 draw as well. Do you know what? I was thinking this. We haven't had any 0-0s. Oh, have we not? No. We don't believe in the board draws. Uh, Newcastle, Southampton. I'm going for a 1-0 to Newcastle. Oh, I was going to say a fucking 1-0. All right, I'm going to go... No, 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 no. I'm going to go for a 2-0 Newcastle. Okay. Liverpool versus Spurs. This is a good game. There's a couple of good Four games. 4-1 one, Liverpool. I think Liverpool murder them. And I hope they do. But like I said, I always, when it's a Liverpool prediction, predict Liverpool to concede. I'm going to go 3-1 Liverpool. Leicester versus Everton. Battle of the bottom of the yep. table. Battle at the bottom. Um, Leicester, Everton, I'm going to go 1-0. 1-0. I'm going to go for a 1-0 Leicester win. Arsenal versus Chelsea. Arsenal, Chelsea, that's a big game. Arsenal got some big fixtures coming up. I think Arsenal too much for this disjointed Chelsea side. I'm going to go for a... But if we just got back in 6-1, will we have the cojones? I think the wobble is well and truly in effect. <laughs> but 
I'm gonna, I'm, I still back to get a result against Chelsea. I'm going to go for a 3-2 Arsenal. That'd be a good game. And our form against Chelsea recently, we had stinkers. It does depend them, a lot if Saliba's recently back. Recently, our form is crazy against so, them. 0.9 goals per game average with Saliba. 1.8 without him. Doubled. That's crazy. But yeah, I think it. we've got too much for Chelsea. Our, our front line will actually murder that defence. Like that, They've got one of the worst defences in the league. Only, yeah. The only one of any repute is Thiago Silva. He, yeah. He's the only one who can actually hold his head high. And honestly, I think we'll murder them defensively. So I'm going to go 2-0 Arsenal. Liverpool versus Fulham. I'm going to go for a 2-0 Liverpool. I'm going to go for a 3-0 Liverpool. Man City, West Ham. 5-0. Oh, City are running riot in London. I think I've got like 30 goals in <laughs> City. Thinking. You said the City are going to come to London what did I say? and run riot. Did I say riot. six, five and four? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Something yeah, like that, yeah. Running riot in London. But uh, I'm going to say a City win as well. But I'm going to say 2-0. And to round it off, Thursday the 4th of May, a, a rematch yeah, come of on. the FA Cup semi-final. Brighton versus United. Brighton will have their revenge. It's going to be a 2-1 win to Brighton. I agree, 2-1 win to Brighton. That rounds up our predictions. Thank you very much for watching, bash, guys. Bash, bash. Board draw, episode 43. Our floppies of the season. Thank you for watching the floppies, man. The floppies. We'll be back again next year. Yes. Bringing you the floppies. Yes. As we have decided to call it halfway through this podcast. If you have enjoyed the floppies, remember to like, comment and subscribe. Get involved in the discussion talk down below let us know who would be in your floppies let us know who we missed out we'll tweet the ones that we couldn't decide you can decide the ones again to the the floppy 11 um but yeah thank you very much for watching guys make sure to follow all our socials everything down below in the description got some um, big content coming out in the next month or so so get excited big content big big content um but yeah thank you very much for a little for watching guys uh remember to go over to tfo and drop them an rip because we're going to miss them boys they're not dead. Uh, they're just stopping the podcast. Joe Devine, come on the pod, please. You're one of my top... JJ Ball, too. Guests, please. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. It's been Board Draw, and it's live.